The internet is no longer about commercials. It's about information, answers, and tips. And this is really what, uh, what e-learning is about as well, information, answers, and tips. So what a wonderful opportunity we all have. And it's not about reading the book. By the way, I'll show you something in a minute about a guy who has two number one bestsellers on the New York Times bestselling list without ever bringing in a publisher to the equation. So, what we're doing here in, in the 2012 to 2012, uh, 2020 era is really the era of disintermediation. In other words, the middlemen are, are being taken out of the equation. We already know that. And you know it yourself. You're now advertising um, using the internet. For example, what every so often I get this uh, email from Vivian and the team saying, if you know anybody who's interested in joining MAMA next year, please convey it. What will I do? I've done that. Not too many takers in Australia, unfortunately, at the moment, but we're working on it. But what I will do is I will take the, the video, uh, which Chris and I happen to be in, you know, God help you, you know, you really need to update that. And uh, so we, we'll send that out, and, and tell, there's, there's a, a, almost a, a YouTube type video who talks about uh, MAML. You're selling content, you're selling MAML. You're selling the image that MAML is promoting. Sustainability, this place is a center of excellence for sustainability. Judy gave a presentation on this uh, in 2008 when I was here. Yeah. But and perhaps maybe there's some strategies to leverage uh, when, when the economy uh, improves, to leverage sustainability and this whole um, uh, master's in it and PhD in it. You know, I, I would seriously consider doing that. I have uh, a potential young step son-in-law who was, is very interested in that space, worked for the Clinton Foundation. He read some of the stuff that, that Judy uh, put together. Um, because he's in San Francisco, he went to this place called the Singularity University. So, you know, you could collaborate between them. But he's definitely interested in doing something like that, and he actually gives serious consideration to come, to come here. But circumstances at this stage prevented it. So, we talked about Trumpeter, and we talked about the different waves. Basically, you have the, the water power textile era, the steam, <coughs> the electricity, you know all this stuff, petrochemicals, the digital network software, new media era. And it's accelerating at an awful rate here. We're now into um, Internet 3.0. And 3.0 is really how do we exploit social media as well as the Internet. The Internet effectively is dead in its, in its typical context. So what's out here now in, the, in its stead is mobility and apps. So just-in-time learning, e-learning, is going to be delivered to you through apps. Or you deliver your modules or your focused content through apps on either an iPhone or an Android type device. That's where the market is going, and let me give you some data on this. Gardner, say 38 to 58 billion is the market for mobile apps. By 2014, that's what, two years away? Mobile apps development projects will outnumber PG, uh, PC projects four to one, the Gardner group data. Apple has paid over $3 billion to app owners, developers. These are people who put their apps out onto the app exchange. So the question is, if that's happening, you're either going to be a, a, a user of this, a, a buyer of this, or you could also be a seller of this. If you've got something useful that's sitting there and you're wondering, how do I take this out to the public? Not the local public, but the global public. This is going to be your vehicle. And uh, how that looks, is a bit like this. Most times when you do internet marketing, you might have an opening uh, of about 4%. On apps and on your mobility, the open rate for a promotion is 97%. That's the data that's out there. The biggest problem with internet marketing is getting, in the first instance, found, and the second instance, building trust and credibility. The web, as you know, it is dying. This is a comment that was made in Wired magazine about two years ago. Mobile devices and tablets are taking over. I actually went to the dark side recently. I bought a Mac. This poor little baby here is on his last legs. The problem was, I didn't have time enough to transfer everything across, so hence, here's my little antique with me. But I'm going to keep this one, because this is going to be my last PC. Why? Because I've also got an iPad, an iPod, I, I this, I that. We now live in a mobile age, it's time to go mobile, and hence the whole app piece. So, new e-learning. 
So what, what I tried to do is give a context around what's going on in the marketplace. When we look at e-learning, we've got to look at it through the lens of social media. We've got to look at it through the lens of mobility. We have to look at it through the lens of apps. Because that's really where the market is going. And if you're not, do, if you're not doing that as an institution, in the first instance, you're going to be left behind. Because what it does, it's the old notion of the fisherman. Where what you have, you, you've got a hook with bait, a line, reel, and a basket. Okay? The basket actually is mammal. So you've got to get, how do you get people into mammal? You've got to have a bait. You give them a little bit. You front load your value add. You say, here's, here's your value proposition. Here's what you will get. Not the, not the academic piece, but here's how you will improve your position relative to maybe your business, social, or personal scenario. You give them a little bit of content up front, free. Some people say, if you've got a book and you've got 10 chapters, give them chapter four. Why would you give them chapter four? Anybody got any ideas why you give them chapter four, not chapter one? Good one, Sherlock. <laughs> That's exactly the point. Because we are naturally curious. What you do is you give them real value content that they will benefit from. But we're curious individuals, and this is what, um, this is a strategy, I don't call this a trick, this is a strategy because we're naturally curious. So we give away first, the, the, the fourth chapter, or alternatively, if, we're not, if we don't buy into that notion, what you do is you give them access to the first chapter for a period of three days. What you'll see a lot of internet marketing is we give you the 30 or 60 day money back guaranteed, no questions asked. Why are they doing that? The reason they're doing that is that there's four obstacles in the buying process. First one, and the most important one, and the reason why you have to do this is the first obstacle in the buying process is no trust. I don't trust you. I don't tr in other words, what they're saying, I don't trust your intent. The second obstacle is no need. In other words, I don't see that I have a need for what you've got, so you have to communicate that. The third obstacle is no help. No help means I don't see what you've got translates into the pain or the issue that I have got myself. How do you solve my problem? And the final one is no hurry, which is uh, and it's a balance of consequence. The pain is I'm going to have to give you money. The gain is I might get some value, so you've got to answer all these questions. That's what buying dynamics is about. So. Learning transformation. University of stuff that matters. Well, we've been, I, I thought man that mattered, and I still do. University of stuff that works. What, am I, what do I mean by work? Why, would the, why, why do you think there would be a differentiation between those? You can't operationalize everything. Say again? You, you can't operationalize everything. Some of it's tacit. Exactly. You cannot op operationalize it. When I come in here to Mammo, there's such a wealth of knowledge, and this is a great thing. But also, I can come back to, to, to Mammo because I might not get something or it may not be relevant to me right now. So, what, in, in internet marketing and social, uh, social media, there's two things that really are coming to the fore. One is relevance, and two, and this is where Mammo has got the, 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 uh, the brand well, well covered, and that's authority. You see a lot of people sending stuff out there. And the reason why we all do our dissertations, I learned, is that you have to quote people. When you quote something, you've got to say, here's who said it. This person of relevance, this person of authority. So within this whole piece, we focus is very important because we've got to narrow the focus on what we're trying to do. It's got to be relevant, relevant it's got to be authoritative, and accountability is a key thing. Why, was, why is accountability so important? How does MAML uh, enable accountability for your program? <coughs> Perhaps you get a external resource which says, yes, this stuff is fine. Um, rather than giving in the EAMS 80% all the time, he's actually worked about largely above 50% for his last essay. So that's what accountability is about. It's again, it's about measurement. Measurement is very important. Hence, measurement and everything else this whole piece here is all part of the overall strategy. If you're going to operate in a social media e-learning marketplace, you have to have this. Traditional learning, we know what that looks like. The new e-learning, 
ad hoc JIT research, ad hoc just-in-time research. You're doing this yourselves. Anybody who stood up here before me has done this. Virtual global e-learning. It's not, you're not just coming to MAMO. Not everybody can afford to or have the time to come to MAMO. But what you can do is you can segment MAMO. You can take MAMO, part of it can be here, part of it can be virtual. And this is what uh, Vivian has been doing for years and years. And now you've got e-learning and you've got open university, etc. But it's got to be much more focused. And you've got to learn, leverage the tools, social media to exploit that. And why, why is that important? Because not everybody's got a job for life. We're all career remapping. Yeah. Um, I met, met a, a lady there this morning uh, in this, um, is, uh, Pam is it? From Pam? Pam, um, she, she's now moving into, uh, into this, uh, her, her whole, she's a top performing executive, has about like 18,000 accountants uh, in, uh, reporting into her as, as head of uh, uh, e-learning. But she's changing her perspective. We may, we're meeting other people who are getting out of the game and get, becoming artists to remap in their career. Maybe the current career is not fulfilling enough or whatever. But in order to do that, you can't actually go back and do four years. Some people can. But you can't, you can't go back and do a complete degree of study. You've got to have some just-in-time stuff that will enable you to be hired in order to, such that you have relevance and authority. For example, Microsoft, you could actually get a job with Microsoft quicker if you had one of their programs done as opposed to having a four-year degree. So, the challenge though is that because we're creatures of habit, and some people will say, yep, I got that, I'm gonna go for it. Risk takers. Others are gonna say, no, I'm very comfortable where I am right now, I don't need to change because why? I don't have a mortgage. I haven't have a mortgage, so I've got motivation to change because my traditional marketplace dried up. I had to reinvent myself. I dumped probably 80% of the stuff that made me uh, a reasonably successful uh, player in the traditional corporate sense. That stuff doesn't work anymore. I've got a friend who's a, uh, an accountant, a fellow in the CPA, and, uh, and also he's a, a fellow in the Institute of Management in Australia. He had been getting, he was turning back business. Within the last two years, he couldn't get near business. Why? Because traditional players are encroaching down on him. He's an independent con uh, consultant. Andersons, everybody else, uh, McKenzie, they're all moving into that space because it's drying up. Why is it drying up? Because the traditional role of the McKenzies and the Andersons and the Accentures is to provide insight and knowledge and credibility, which the customer is now saying, hey, I get that on the internet. How is that? Well, I found this little YouTube that gave me the training. I have some e-learning. So that's what's actually going on. So you've got a decision to make. You can either say, this is interesting, but I've got no motivation, or you can say, maybe this is something I want to explore further. So here's, a, here's the thing in terms of sustainability. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Okay? Or someone else will. So if you want something different, you've got to do something different. If it's not working today, you've got to change. And we're in now in a, an environment of rapid change. We're in a, a massive transformation in terms of the way we do business, the way we socialize, the way we commercialize, and even our families. Our families are no longer around us in Bury or wherever it might be. They might be in Chicago singing, as Chris's daughter is. <coughs> okay? I, I, op I operate out of Australia, and, and I've got all the family members who are in the States and, and, and so on and so forth. There's people here who come from all over the world. So here's the interesting piece, though, and this is a challenge for all of us, and I'm making fun of uh, academics here to some extent, because I love them. I have the best I, I have an academic experience ever through the manual uh, process, and I've said that in, in, in essays. But the truth of the matter is we're all in that space. Most of us don't want to do this unless we have to. I had to because my space was drying up. It's, an, it's either adapt or die. We're, in terms of learning, e-learning, it is in that scenario. Fortunately, it's in the early stages of that scenario, but going forward, you'll find it's going to be more and more, this is the area that's going to encroach in your traditional way of making money and even retain, retaining employment. So, this whole just-in-time approach, how do, you, how do you deal with this elephant, or how do you eat the elephant? Someone said, to eat an elephant, you've got to eat the other than one bite at a time. So if 
78% of businesses are actively using social media, and more than 24 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every day. This su suggests to us that maybe we need to look at this YouTube thing a little bit closer in terms of how can we get some value from it, how can we exploit or leverage that particular resource. So, some of the tools in social media and in just-in-time e-learning. We've got Facebook.